Yo, what's good with y'all? In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to make combat hitboxes and stuff. This sword has been requested. People have asked about hitboxes and stuff. So I was like, let me go ahead and make a video and show you guys um hitboxes and stuff. So let's go ahead and get straight into it. Okay, so first things first, let's go ahead and let's insert a remote, remote event into replicated storage. We're going to re rename this combat event, right? So I'm going to talk to you guys. We're going to set up an, a basic M1 system that uses hitboxes. So you guys see the practicality and how to use them and how they generally work. I'm going to explain it to you, which is very simple and kind of self-explanatory when you see how it's all set up and everything. But I'll just give you guys the explanation. Okay, so first things first if you don't know what a hitbox is the hitbox is when you're playing any type of fighting game like most games use them when you're playing a type of fighting game it's usually like a box around a player obviously you can't see it in game but it's pretty much an invisible box and as the name implies hitbox it detects like whether or not if like if a player makes contact if a player comes into contact with uh within this box then like you know they'll, then they're close enough to the player so that they can deal damage them if that makes sense right so let's go ahead and set that up so if you're looking to see cooldown stuff i have a separate video on how to make cooldowns so i can i'll have that linked at the end of the video but anyway let's go ahead and insert a local script into your starter player scripts we can rename said script combat script and in parentheses put local right boom we can delete print hello world first things first we want to get the user input service so let's say local uis is equal to game get service user input service <clears throat> then let's get the combat mode event let's say local combat event is equal to game the replicated storage wait for child combat event then lastly let's create a variable called attack number let's say local attack number is equal to one by default we're going to decide we're going to keep track of which m1 because you know we're going to go left punch right punch then kick and then we're going to repeat if you guys watch my how to make the strong m1s from the strongest battlegrounds you guys will see this is the exact same i just took the code from there modified it a little bit and here we are so yeah so go ahead and set up the function we're going to say uis dot sorry we're gonna say uis dot input begin connect function in parentheses put input comma processed enter you're gonna say if input dot user input type is equal to enum dot user input type dot mouse button one right and not to process so i'm gonna start doing it like oh sorry i'm gonna start doing it like this i usually do and process is you know equal to false this is the faster way all we have to do is just do not then process instead of saying processed Instead of saying process to equal signs false, we can just do not processed, right? Because it means the same thing. Not is the same as saying um, equal to false. So enter, right? And then you're going to say if attack number is equal to one, enter, you're going to say attack number plus equal one. And then you're going to say combat event by your server in quotation marks M1. That's the name of the event. And then we need to specify which type of M1. So we're going to say left punch. Then enter, you're going to say else if attack number is equal to two enter you're going to do the same thing attack number plus equal one this time you're going to say combat event fire server m1 quotation marks comma and then this time right punch right then lastly we're going to say else if attack number is equal to three enter we want it to repeat so we're going to say attack number is equal to one right then we're going to say combat event fire server in quotation marks you're going to put m1 comma in quotation marks you're going to put kick right and boom just like that we are done setting up everything on the client side now we can move to the server side so we can insert a server script into server script servers of course you're going to need your own animations you can insert an animation boom then rename it and then uh, make sure your naming has to match like what i'm about to type on the server script so make sure you, your names match whatever's on the script right and then you put your animation id inside of you know the animation id part and stuff um you guys can't use my animations and stuff like that's not possible you have to put you have to use animations that you have published now it could be animations you haven't made but you have to publish them yourselves so you can't use mine so i honestly didn't know that until like a month ago or two months ago so you're gonna put your animations inside of your script or you keep inside of server storage just up to, i mean yeah server storage it's up to you guys so we can rename the script combat script in parentheses put server right then we're going to delete Pernella World. We only need two variables. First things first, we're going to get the combat remote event. We're going to say local combat event <clears throat> is equal to game the replicated storage, wait for child combat event. Then we're going to create a table for um players who can't be attacked. Cannot, I should say. Can't, so local can't be attacked is equal to special brackets. That's how we create a table. So can't be attacked. These are players who just were hit with M1, so it's going to have a 0 0.1 uh, delay. So like, players can't be attacked you know so they won't get double hit pretty much just prevent double hitting by the same person using the same attack so we're going to say game.players.playerAdded connect 
function in parentheses put plr short for the player then enter you're then going to say player dot character added connect function in parentheses put character then enter right we're going to add the hitbox onto the player every time their character is added so when they first run the game and then if they die it's going to keep getting added over and over again so we're going to create it we're going to first say local hitbox is equal to instance dot new quotation marks but part this is a regular part you're going to parent this to the character's humanoid root part boom then before we get into uh setting the properties we're going to weld it to the player so that it stays with the player so we're going to say local again moves with the player so we're going to say local weld constraint is equal to instance that new weld constraint parent this to the hitbox you're going to say weld constraint that part zero is equal to hitbox and then weld constraint part one is equal to character dot humanoid part right <clears throat> then we're gonna start setting the hitbox properties we're gonna first say hitbox that name is of course you know hitbox right then we're gonna say hitbox that anchored we, we um we do not want it to be anchored right sorry we do not want it to be anchored and then we're gonna say hitbox dot massless. We want it to be massless so that it won't like drag around. It won't like have any weird type of dragging effects. So massless is equal to true. And then we want can collide to be turned off is equal to false. And then hitbox by default can touch will be disabled. We're going to enable it whenever a player tries to use um any type of attack. Then we're gonna set the transparency. So we're gonna say hitbox and tr transparency is equal to 0 0.5. Now I wanna clarify something. So for the sake of the video, so you guys can see it, because you know, obviously majority of people are visual learners, it's better to see it than me talking and like you imagining the box. So I want you guys to be able to partially see it. So you can see like the sizing with the character as well as um me explaining it. I, I feel like it would help. So now when it comes time for your actual game, you would want transparency to be set to one because obviously why would you want the players to be able to see your your hitboxes that wouldn't really make sense to me it's not really a problem with that but it's that's just weird to see in a fighting game to see hitboxes but anyway you're then going to see i mean they're going to say hitbox dot size is equal to size is up to you guys but i this is the best size i thought so i went with five comma six comma 2.5 right and then i'm going to um i'm going to set the color this is optional you guys don't have to do this color three dot new i just prefer it to be red because you know it's hitboxes so i just personally prefer it to be a nice distinct color and then we're going to set the c frame we're going to say hitbox pivot two and then we're going to say character dot humanoid root part dot c frame and boom just like that the hitbox is fully set up we are done with that function now we're going to set up the m1 function right so we're going to say combat event on server event connect function in parentheses put plr short for player comma event type comma arg1 arg1 short for argument number one these are going to be the m1 type so first thing first we're going to get the player's character so say local character is equal to player dot character i'm then going to say if event type is equal to m1 enter right oh didn't mean to that enter right then i'm going to set up the attack i'm going to get the attack type variable so i'm say local attack type is equal to arg1 then i'm going to set up the animation track so local at is equal to character dot humanoid sorry load animation and then you're going to say you're going to say script regular brackets arg1 this is why i said naming is important right you guys see how the names match the names are the exact same as the animation the, like the name of the the name of the m1 type is the exact same name for the name of the animation that's why i said it's, it's essential that um you have it like that so you don't have to put each um animation individually you could just do it like this it makes it makes job a little easier so then we're going to say at play we're going to play the animation right like i said if you guys want to see how to do cooldowns i have a separate video on that but this video won't include that and then i'm going to say character dot humanoid root part dot hitbox dot can touch is then equal to true and i'm going to say character dot humanoid root part dot hitbox dot touched connect function in parentheses put hit enter right you're then going to set up an if statement you're going to say if hit dot parent find first child humanoid so seeing if it's either an npc or a player and hit dot parent dot name is nil equal to player dot name just to make sure of course you're not you know damaging yourself and not table dot find can't be attacked 
hit that pattern. Remember, we're referencing the enemy player, not the player that's attacking. Enter. And then we're going to insert the name into the table, of course. Table.insert. And to be attacked, comma, hit that parent, that name, right? Then I'm going to set the um, hitboxes can't touch equal to false. So we could just copy and paste this. We could just control C, control V, and then just change true to false, right? Then we're going to do, we're going to, you know, do the damage. We're going to say hit that parent, that humanoid, that health is less than equal to 10. Up to you guys for how much damage you want to do. And I'm going to put a task that way. I'm going to say task that way 0 0.1 second and then i'm going to remove their name from the table so i'm going to say table dot remove can't be attacked comma table dot find can't be attacked comma um hit that parent that name right and then of course we need to add a check just to make sure in case the player is on um, in case the player you know used m1 but he didn't actually hit anybody and then we need to say task that way you can wait like probably like, for me i feel like waiting one second should be good enough so we're going to say we're going to check to see if the status is the same so i'm just going to paste what i already had copied so control v right and then i'm going to just um edit it a little bit i'm going to say bring it back over bring it back over here so i'm going to say if it yeah so if it's equal to true enter then we're just going to do the opposite so paste it again and set it to false right and just say that guys we are done so if i go ahead and join the game let me show you guys real quick what it looks like so here's what it should look like. Boom. You guys see how it's around my player. It's generally around. Like it's not the measurements aren't exact, but it's generally around. And that's honestly what you want. You would want it to be around. You wouldn't want to necessarily be like a player has to literally touch another player just to do damage. You guys see, but you guys see my, like my body sticks out like when I'm walking and stuff. Hence why I said it's for you guys to go with sizing and stuff. Now the testing, you could start up a testing server with actual, you know, with like, with in a sense, NPC players. But I would honestly just recommend you just use a, um, you would just set up a rig. Uh, okay, there we go. I would just recommend setting up an NPC rig. We can go ahead and test it, you know? So, okay, so if you guys see, left punch, right punch, kick. So there aren't any cooldowns, hence why I can just, like, you know, do all the different animations at once. But anyway, left punch, right punch, kick. You guys see, now if I move up to the rig, so boom, you guys see how I only did it. I only did damage once, right? Like I said, it's to prevent double hitting. So look, so if I use it, right, boom, one second has passed, boom, no damage is dealt because it removed my name from the table. That's the whole point of this uh, check, just to make sure so that we can't like do this, then like walk up to the rig like minutes later and do damage just by walking up to them and stuff. So yeah, it's pretty much, you know, if they touch, if they make contact with this wire, you know, while you're using any type of attack, they will be in it. Um, I would recommend changing the hitbox size depending on the attack. You know, for like AOE attacks and stuff. Obviously, you know, if it's like an AOE attack where like it's sending like some type of explosion like over there or something, you would probably put like a maybe like a box. I don't know, like a box over there and stuff. And if players were over, were in that kind of that box then you know they would they would do damage and stuff like that it really depends on stuff i can do a part two and show you guys more in-depth things for aoe attack stuff if you guys want just let me know if the video gets enough likes and you know likes comments and support then i got you with a part two so if you guys enjoyed the video don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and thank you guys for watching i'll see you guys in the next video